Good Sunday afternoon, everyone. This is Pastor Britt Schrohecker coming to you from the New Beginnings Church office. And I know it's been a while since I broadcast anything on here, uh, but today I wanted to say Happy New Year. And you're probably wondering, why are you saying Happy New Year? Because it's November the 27th, 2016. The New Year is still over a month away. Well, that is the calendar New Year is over a month away. However, today is the first Sunday in Advent. And the first Sunday in Advent starts off a brand new church year. A brand new Christian church year. And we start the season of Advent by lighting candles on our Advent reef. And today we light the first purple candle on that reef, which is the candle of hope. And one thing I'd like to say about hope is what's said here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, What is faith? It is the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It is the evidence of things we cannot yet see. Faith brings us hope. And I know that there's many times in life where we need some sort of hope. We need to have some hope that tomorrow will be a better day, that we can improve our circumstances, or that we can find a better life through Christ. Because that's what Christ gives us, is hope. Back in the days when Israel was in exile, because of years of obedience and rebellion against God, God warned them that if they didn't straighten up their ways, and if they didn't obey him, and if they didn't pay attention or heed his word, then they were going to suffer the consequences. And consequences they did suffer. They were exiled from the promised land. The land that was promised to their ancestors. The land that was flowing with milk and honey. They were exiled away from that place, and they were given fair warning. Many a prophet came along and said, look, we need to straighten up. We need to fix ourselves. We need to get back on track with our faith. Because our faith is what gives us hope. Hope for a better future. Hope that we can continue to live in this land and also prosper and pass on those blessings to the generations that follow us. But they didn't do that. Instead, they continued on the road of disobedience and rebellion, and they found themselves exiled outside of the land that was promised to them by God. But, even though they had prophets to tell them about, hey, there are possibilities that something bad will happen to us if we don't change our ways, they also gave them a message of hope. And that message of hope was details about a Messiah. A Messiah that was coming into the world to save them from the effects of sin, to help restore them, to bring them back into balance and into right relationship with God, and to conquer those things of this world that have drugged them down or torn them away from their faith in God. And they were expecting a king. But like I told our congregation this morning, even though it says in Isaiah chapter 9, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, Almighty God, the Prince of Peace. All those different titles. They were looking for a mighty warrior, a king, that would come and rule the land and bring them back into right relationship with God and restore peace to Israel. But they forgot to listen what Isaiah further said about this Messiah that was to come into the world, and they forgot to look at the rest of the story. They stopped at what they found was attractive. They stopped at what they felt was the thing that they needed to hear and they wanted to hear, and they stopped listening. But Isaiah further said he was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. From prison and trial they led him away to his death. But who among the people realized that he was dying for their sins, that he was suffering their punishment? He had done no wrong, 
and he never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. See, what they didn't understand is this is the type of Messiah that God had in mind to send to the world to save us from ourselves, to help us to overcome the, the nasty effects of sin and the wages of sin that were piling up, our sin debt just piling up and never being satisfied. But God said, you know what? I'm not going to give up on my people. I'm not going to give up on my creation. I'm not going to give up on those that I love. Instead, I'm going to make things right. And I'm going to do it in a way that nobody ever anticipated. And I'm going to do it in a way that not only will be the best way and the only way to save them, but also a way that will teach them how to live a better life and how to claim the hope that their faith can give to them. That's why today we light that candle of hope, because Jesus Christ represents that hope to all the world. Regardless of what we have done, he is the one that can free us from the bondage of sin. He is the one that can save us from the death of sin. Because the Bible clearly says to us, the wages of sin are death, is death. He is the only one that can pay the sin debt that we owe. And he has. He has paid it in full. And he is truly the reason for this season. We celebrate Christmas because the greatest gift that God ever gave to mankind was his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hold on to that hope. Because if you want to hope for a better tomorrow, get to know Jesus today. I'll talk to you soon. Until then, I'll be praying for you.